Hi guys, hope you're doing awesome. One, two, well honestly, we're so excited to share this video and this information that we have just three and a half years of knowledge, honestly, that's all we're doing, about sleep training. Mm -hmm. And sleep training kiddos at a young age. And I feel like parents kind of struggle with this in all seasons of having a kid under five. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe so. We've had friends ask us and re-ask us, like, how have we done it? So we thought we'd share this. And so please subscribe, like, comment, and honestly share this with people that you feel like would get value out of it. That's why we're sharing our knowledge, honestly. Um, so who are we? We are Alex and Amy Meyer. We have three boys. They are joys of our lives. And I, everyone asks, like, how is it? Must be busy. It's a joyful life. That's all I'm going to say. We've always wanted a house full of life, and that's exactly what we got, for sure. Um, we've, we're very blessed with them. So Xander is three and a half. And then Macklin is going to be two in a little over a week. And Asher is eight, mo eight months old, almost eight months old. So we have been in the thick of things of sleep training for the past three and a half years. And this so. journey kind of began as soon as Xander was born. And it's so crazy as new parents to think like everything changes. And, and that's the scary part is not having the child. The scary part is how to parent the child. Oh gosh. And how to do it in such a way that there's a sense of abundance and you're not just like, um, you know, tired all the time and walking around like zombies. And I, I feel like that was our experience for the first two months with Xander when he was born. Um, and he's three and a half now. And that, that got us on this path of, of learning about how to have a better routine with him and how to set up sleep, how to do sleep training so that we wouldn't just be ships flying in the middle, you know, yeah, passing, passing each other in the middle of the Seriously, night. I just yeah. remember us really struggling with our routine we would be so tired all the time mm -hmm. and xander you know he's a little baby and we'd feed him in the middle of the night and he'd be so excited that we were holding him and seeing yeah. him and then it would be forever for us to get him back down again and and so we investigated uh looking into sleep training and we we sought some perspectives from some professionals yeah. and we read some books and yeah. we watched some youtube videos and yeah. we looked online and watched yeah. and looked at blogs and and we want to share what we did mm -hmm. with our kids yeah and it has been successful yeah. and so xander we started at two months uh sleep training mm -hmm. uh macklin and asher we started at six weeks with sleep yeah. training yeah. and uh which and is so, early some people might say that's really well, early yeah yeah but yeah. for us that was it was the perfect timing yes and in in all three cases within two three days mm -hmm. we were on a routine Mm -hmm. where our kids were sleeping through the night with one feed in the middle of the night. Yeah. And it was a quick feed back to bed. It was yeah. and it it's like a it feed. was like freedom for us as yeah. parents, especially yeah. new parents to feel empowered that we were we felt like we were doing things right at that point. Totally. Totally. I love that. Um we have and as a new parent, you all know this like and who those of you who are parents are going to be parents or no parents it's it's overwhelming in general like Alex shared and there's so much information out there and all we hope is that this this video empowers you in some aspect we picked things that empowered us and that made sense for us and who we are and our parenting style and one of them is a book called baby wise and trust me we know that you can go down the rabbit hole of baby wise um, and it could be pretty intense or it could be very abundant so from the book, there's only a few things that benefited us and that we took from it. And one of them was this kind of the schedule um, that they have laid out. And so they have it laid out from like newborn stage all the way up, I think, to a year old. And they have it broken down from like 7 a.m. all the way to the evening kind of dream feed style. So we took bits and pieces of that and kind of fit it in and we used it as a framework. And then on top of that, the other part we used was the whole eat, wake, sleep kind of system. And we love that because it made sense yeah. to us. So baby wakes up from a nap and you feed them right away. And then you feed them and then you play with them. You have that awake time and you kind of tire them out from that awake time. And then they go have a nap, they go, ha they go to bed, whatever it is. The only thing with that schedule that I was sharing about is that they put in there a dream feed, which we definitely did because you know a baby needs a full tummy. But that being said, it's like baby wakes up, we do a dream feed, and then we put the baby straight back to bed. Yeah. 
Um, there was no wake time within that. But that was the only time that we, comp- that we not even compromised, but that we, we followed very strictly. Um, the one thing with the whole wake time is that we made sure it was for sure 20 minutes. So the child woke up from a nap, they ate, and then we had the wake time for 20 minutes. And me as a mom, I didn't, I personally didn't love breastfeeding. And I knew of other moms that said, oh, I have to give my baby a bottle for them to fall asleep. Or, oh, I have to breastfeed. They wake up in the middle of the night and I have to breastfeed them and they fall asleep. And for me and Alex, we both love our freedom. We both love sleep. And we both love the ability to really um, have our kids on a great routine, right? So at any point we can input a nanny, input a babysitter, input grandma and grandpa or nana and papa or aunts and uncles and they can follow that system. So we were, we used the framework of the schedule within BabyWise as a framework of our systems, our routines for every single one of our kids and they still, still to this day, we have the schedule actually on a whiteboard by our back door for whoever comes to look after our kiddos. They can just look at that back, that schedule and they know exactly what, how everything looks. And so what is the, the cry it out method? And so for us with Xander, uh, we started sleep training him when he was two months. And what that looks like is after he's had his playtime and it's time for him to go down, we would have his regular blanket with him. We would have his regular soother with him. We would have as much of consistency around the routine of putting him down as possible. Um, we would put him down. And if he started fussing right away, we would leave and we would actually put a timer on for three minutes. And if he cried and cried and cried, we would have to, and this is the hard part for new parents, we would abstain from going in and rushing in and grabbing him and calming him down yeah. until the three minutes was up. Yeah. And even then, you know, our goal was never to pick him up. You know, if we could soothe him by patting his bum or rubbing his back or getting his soother back in or, or reorienting him with his blanket, that was ideal because the less we had to handle with him, the less likely he was to wake up and become fully awake again. Yeah. Um, and so we would calm him down, put him in, and if he started fussing again, we would put on a three minute timer. Yeah. Now the same is true is if we left and he was calm for a good five minutes, 10 minutes, and maybe we had, a, you know, we're on to other things and we hear him crying, immediately we would put on a three minute timer. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, there, there is a, a plan for if that's not working or if the child is, is older than three months, you, you know, there's a five minute timeline, there's a, you know, upwards to a 10 minute timeline. But yeah. in our situation with all three of our boys, we never got past three minutes. Yeah. And actually it was, we had to do that maybe for two, three days, Xander maybe four days. And all of a sudden they learned how to self-soothe. And that's the priority for sleep training is, mm-hmm. is that your baby learns how to self-soothe mm-hmm. and not rely on mom, or not rely on the bottle or the breast to be able to fall asleep. Yeah. Um, and, and that was huge. Yeah, or even like the rocking. Mm-hmm. Like some, some babies need to hear like, and Xander was at that point is where we had to bounce him and rock him until he fell asleep. And then we put him down and he'd like wake up instantly. You're like, oh my gosh, what the heck? Um, so like there's a few things that we did like like Alex shared like there was that the consistency with like the environment and everything but all of our boys have a blanket all of our boys have a soother and they've it's always been something like for nap time for bedtime everything we would make sure the blinds are closed and we would put them down in their crib give them their soother give them the blanket and then leave um, we never really and it's so cool because we've had the transition of Xander where we we were struggling to have anything for him to fall asleep until we started sleep training him It's true And so we were like the bouncers and the rockers and everything with him and then we started sleep training him And it's just been it was amazing to now with Asher where it's like he's a dream baby yeah. <laughs> And sometimes people go yeah anyways he's a dream baby You put him down you can just soothe her like he just woke up actually in the middle of this filming and I like Give him, lay him down, give him his soother, his blanket, and he closes his eyes, big smile, and goes to sleep. And you're like, this is awesome. So that's why we love we love sleep training so much, is because it's that consistency, and that ex- and the consistency and the understanding of what a baby is really wanting, right? Like they're crying for you to soothe them, and it might be for food or anything like that. And going back to a schedule, like 
there are so many times of us being new parents, even new parents with a new baby. Yeah. And it's like with all of our kids and Alice is like, do they need to eat? Uh, are they supposed to be sleeping now? And it's so good. I think as a, as a wife with your spouse to be like, Hey, like having a schedule and be like, you know what? They ate five minutes ago or they ate 10 minutes ago or an hour ago. They don't need to eat again. Or it's like, Oh, they haven't ate for three hours. Yeah. They probably do need to eat. Um, or they should be sleeping now. So it's like, okay, well, let's, let's kind of, let's focus on, we'll let them cry out for three minutes and we'll kind of go down that journey. Um, and then of course, like if they, their bum needs to be changed, you pretty much can see that. Um, it's either at that age, at those ages, it's like a poop explosion, which is really wonderful. Or, um, you can feel the heaviness of the wet diaper, right. but that's about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and another part that I, you know, from a dad's perspective, around sleep training is and as well as the schedule that we built out with all the kids mm -hmm. and baby wise in the three hour schedule mm -hmm. as a dad it gave me a lot of confidence in knowing how i could actually support oh huge um you know raising the child and right and our children and like support like you, you and in. like where yeah. i fit in because yeah. all of a sudden huge. i could start taking over in certain areas yeah. a lot more seamlessly yeah. Um, and I wasn't always bugging you about it. I wasn't like, where is he at? Or, you know, what does he have? It's like, no, we had a schedule in place. Anyone could have come in and actually helped. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that was so, that was such a confidence builder as a new yeah. dad, because I think a lot of new dads, and if there's any new dads watching this, you know, is a lot of new dads struggle with knowing how they fit into their infants lives. Um, because we're so excluded from a lot of the major activities. Like breastfeeding, <laughs> obviously, and uh, yeah. and so it's super confidence building. And and another piece of that was also recognizing the cry, yeah. um, which which came with time, you know. And yeah. obviously, you know, we're on our third, really close together, and so we're, we've been in the thick of it for three and a half years. Yeah. But you recognize, um, and and the the cry becomes easier to recognize when you have a schedule, right? Yeah, so it's like so if, if you know you're coming up to the feeding time, or you know baby's just waking up, you know that that cry has to do with either a wet diaper or a feed, and you yeah. figure out pretty quickly which one it is. Yeah. And and same when you know if they're fussing because they need to sleep, it's like you figure out that cry pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. And that gosh, that saves you so much as they get older. Um, and maybe they've, you know, they're not having as many bottles. Mm -hmm. Um, it saves you so much. Yeah. And so that's been our journey. And, and just so, just so that, you know, we can kind of clarify with our three boys after the sleep training. So at, at two months, we started with Xander six weeks with the other two, yeah. they sleep through the night. Mm -hmm. Um, they sleep a full 12 hours. Yeah. Um, and they'll have one feed. So Asher still has a feed. And so right now. You know, he goes to bed at 6 p.m. Uh, yeah. He has a bottle. Um, he has wake time, bed. Yeah. And then he gets up around 5 a.m., 4 to 5 a.m., yeah. and he has a bottle. Yeah. And then he immediately goes back to bed for another couple hours. Yeah, he'll wake up and it's like 7, 7.30 is like his awake time. Yeah, and it's, it's like, then it's like breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's he's been like that for a very long time. It's yeah. been like an 11 hour, 10 hour stint. Um, and as of right now, like we're in the thick of it, like Alex wakes up or else I wake up at the 4.30, 4, whatever. And I'm just going to share about last night. He woke up at four o'clock and I gave him his soother, gave him his blanket, said, you're a little monkey, go back to sleep. <laughs> and he didn't get up until 6.30 and then that was his bottle. So he had a bottle, then he went down for another half an hour to sleep, woke up at seven and then we continued on our day. And that was just last night, which is so cool because it's, it's now he's understanding, like he and he is well aware of how to self-soothe himself, mm -hmm. right? And he understands. I think as a parent, you feel like, um, I think when your child is a little bit when they're bigger, like you, you're not worried about weight on them. You're okay with pro of pushing your pushing. I don't want to say the limits, but pushing um, the time frame of them to of you not feeding them. So example, yeah. like Asher is basically 20 pounds and Macklin is 24 pounds <laughs> there is a 15 month difference so we're not worried about like Asher being hungry really for another like when he wakes up at four o'clock I'm not concerned that he's actually starving I'm like no 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 but like you can actually you're okay to sleep for like another 45 minutes closer to five 
and I might just be very like a very scheduled person that I'm like no I'm not gonna feed you till five o'clock bed like you're good and I find that that gave us a benefit of sleeping in for another what two hours yeah. two and a half hours and you're like that's awesome yeah um so yeah. Well, and you bring up a good point and and it's that when you're a new parent and if you've had kids before and maybe you're going through this journey again yeah. you're gonna face things and we kind of want to share what those things might look like. So one of the things is, you know, a crying baby is tough when you're a parent. You want to pick them up. You want to soothe them. And this whole process relies on you helping them learn how to self-soothe. And so that's going to be a little bit of a conflict between what your instinct is yeah. and what's going to actually help with this process. Yeah. The second thing is that, and, and even doing this video, we might get some in the comment, comments, but not everybody's going to agree with totally. how you do this. Totally. Or they're not, so you know, you know, a mother-in-law might come in and say, well, I can't believe you're letting your baby cry for three minutes. And it's like, well, three minutes isn't going to harm the child, right? right? But everybody's got an opinion and moms, you know that everybody's got an opinion. There is such thing as mom shaming. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think it's important to know that, you know, to, to look at the indicators and for us, our, our boys are big. Amy mentioned it, you know, Asher's in the 90th percentile, 100 percentile for okay, weight and height. We're not worried about his weight. Now, if, if you are in a situation where your child, obviously, and we're not professionals, no. doctors, or anything like that, but you know, if, if you're concerned about those things, I, I hope that you're, you're reaching out to a professional and talking to them about that. Yeah. But for us, we weren't worried about that. Yeah. You know, we, we knew that our children were getting the right amount of food, feed, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, breast milk and, and, or formula. Yeah. Like, you know, we knew that they were getting what they needed. Mm -hmm. We also knew, based off of standards, you know, if they were getting enough sleep. And so yeah. this process, if anything, just freed us up as parents to be able to live again and to kind of feel abundant in our routine. And that's because we got our kids on a routine. And so mm -hmm. I think I think it's also important for new parents to know that your life doesn't have to be dictated by the baby. Oh my gosh. And no. the baby's routine. No. That no. you're the parent, mm -hmm. you're the adult, you set the routine yeah. and it just blows our mind. Mm -hmm. We run into so many parents who they cater to every need of, it's nap of the time. child. I and I get it because it's that instinct. It's like, totally. you, know, you, you just want to take care of the child, obviously. Yeah. But I, we want to, we want to hopefully make you feel empowered through this video mm -hmm. to know that you have more control totally. over the schedule and you have more control totally. over the sleep habits and you have more control totally. over your family situation than you might feel as a new yeah. parent. Yeah. Um, and so hopefully this has been helpful to you. Yeah. Absolutely, and I'm just gonna honestly input a few things. So there was, we read Baby Wise, the whole thing about schedule tracker and everything. It was an app called Baby Tracker. I had it for all three kiddos. It's free, it was awesome. And then um, the other one is cluster feeding. So when we had our first kid, when we had Xander, and we, I just scheduled the first week of his life, I really scheduled what his life looked like, what his, because usually babies come out and their days are nights, their nights are days, that kind of thing. And I scheduled it all because then at week two, I was really seeing like what I could do, how can I maneuver things. And that was had nothing to do with sleep training. It was just for me and schedule and peace of mind. Because um, I do believe scheduling is huge. And I do think that they kind of come together with sleep training when you know, when you're listening to the cries and all that and everything else. You're trying to see if the baby's hungry and everything. So then that worked out so well with Asher and Macklin as well, is that I still had that schedule, still had them, and I was able to cluster feed them to the point of like fitting into the schedule of our lives. So example, um, Zan, when Asher came into her life, Xander and Macklin napped at 11 o'clock or 10.30 or 11 a.m. every single day. They were on the same nap schedule, and my goal was to have Asher on that same nap schedule. And I think it was a matter of like two or three yeah, weeks. Like it wasn't, long. it didn't take long at all. But for them to all be napping at the same time, because then for a new mom to have an hour of like complete quietness <laughs> and to have time for yourself in that hour, it was joyful and glorious. So I just, I hope that if anything like Alex shared, that this empowers you in some yeah. aspect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we sure hope it added value for sure. Yes. And if you have any questions about routine or you have any comments or if you've gone through an experience that you think you could add to the conversation, please comment 
totally. please reach out to Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And if you think that it would be valuable for us to do a video on, say, routines, yeah. let us know. We'd, yeah. love, we'd love to know if that's something you're interested in. Absolutely. So, so hopefully this has been helpful, and we'll see you again very soon. Hi guys, hope you're having a great night. Sorry, don't laugh at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Frig, thanks for coming oh. out. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get there.